Hi guys. So I wanted to talk to you about um, email campaigns or actually just gathering email addresses from your clients. So I'm using um, One Salon as an example because I just love the site. It's kind of my perfect dream come true with my clients. Um, I had a chance to, to build the site and design it, but Sarah, the owner, is totally taking off, um, controlling the site on her own and is just kicking booty when it comes to maintaining her site and she has kept the integrity of the site and it's just beautiful and the flow is really well or really um, really good and she's kind of put her own touches so like these are all of her own pictures that she's using and it's just fantastic so um, I want to use her site as an example of how to gather um, email addresses so currently she's using Vigaro with her clients so that means that she has most of her current clients already you know obviously in there she has their email addresses has permission to contact them by email um, but we also want to make sure that she is able to capture people here on her site as well and then be able to find a way to combine those two email address lists so there's a couple of different ways the first thing we need to do is go into your marketing tab and go into the email campaigns within Squarespace. So it's always a good idea just to go ahead and set this up just in case you want to capture your email addresses here. I always say to come into your sender profiles, you're going to want to add one or more sender profiles. It's basically just what email address you would be using because you can choose to send emails from several different people. So in her case, if she wanted to have you know, each site a stylist to be able to send one out, that would be fine. Um, after that is done, then you go into the mailing list and we just set up some new mailing lists. So I typically always do website and then that way I know that any time and I'll show you how this looks in a minute, but anytime we have these in here, like she hasn't even been looking to get people, but I set this up when we started her account and she's already gotten 32 people in here um, without probably even knowing it. So, um, you'd be surprised how many people will actually sign up for the, you know, the mailing list. And I think that this way, when you come in, you go, Oh, so that's where those email addresses came from. They came from my website, but you can also add new ones. So she could add one right now called like Vigaro and save it. And then in that Vigaro list, there are no subscribers, but she could actually import a CSV file and dump all of those Vigaro email addresses in here. Um, just by exporting them from her Vergaro database, importing them in here, and now all of her emails are in the same place. So if she wanted to use this Squarespace email campaigns, she would then be able to create you know, some really kind of gorgeous emails um, through the, the website here and just send them out. And every time she sent one, she would be able to choose whether she wants to send them just to the new website people or just to her Vergaro people or to all of them. You can separate it out as friends and family, et cetera. So it's kind of nice to have those separate mailing lists. Um, so that's keeping them all here. The other thing is like, if she wants to be able to keep them into, you know, maybe she wants to be able to add them to Vergaro as customer list or she wants to be able to put all of them in like a MailChimp or into a Google Drive, then she could absolutely, once they're in here, like these 32 that we have, and I'm not going to click on that list because when you click on the list of 32, it's actually gonna show you, this website list will show you all of their email addresses. Um, and then she can actually export those out. So she could take those and put them into another, you know, platform area and then that way she can just kind of choose how she wants to email them. So we've done that part. In the actual site, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of her home page, this is where I have put in her subscribe button. So this is where those 32 have come from. People have come in here and just stuck their email address in right here. But we're talking about trying to possibly either use like the, she's got an announcement bar right now that currently is going to join her team using that area to try to gather more email addresses um, and making sure that we put it on the new guest form as well. You can also use a marketing pop-up. So in the marketing button again, rather than going to email campaigns, you can go to the promotional pop-up and this could be a place where, like this is her policies, but instead we could completely change the layout if we wanted to add like a nice picture. We could change the action and we could actually have them sign up for a newsletter instead. If they were going to sign up for a newsletter, we would just 
click to say we want to choose the website campaign. We don't want to use the Vagaro or any others. We want to make sure it's on website. That way we know that it's coming from the website or she could make a new one that says pop-up and that way she can find out, hey, I'm getting a lot more from my pop-up than I am from the homepage or what have you. We're going to keep it at click button though. Um, and then when we talk about that announcement bar, so this announcement bar can go anywhere. When we have the announcement bar enabled, we choose what text we want to show up. And then the bar itself is actually what's, what's clickable. So we don't have to link any of the words in here. We actually just use the settings bar to decide if we want it to go to a page, um, you know, an uploadable file. Even you can even do phone and text as well. So in the phone area, you can choose if it's a telephone number or an SMS to text people, which is awesome. So we're going to actually keep it at this page for right now because I'm going to have it go to a page, but I want to go into her pages and take a peek at these. So this is her home index. So we have a page here, a page here, go all the way down and we have a page here at the bottom that is the Instagram page. And at the bottom of the Instagram page, it actually has this subscribe button. So essentially, if I sent them right now, I'd be sending them to this Instagram block, which would have this whole entire picture here. And I'm a little bit nervous that it might confuse people and they might not notice this right here. So I'm gonna go into her pages. I am going to find that Instagram page, whoops, which is down here at the bottom of her home. I'm gonna go into the settings. I am going to duplicate this page and say, yes, I want to duplicate it. And rather than it be called Instagram copy, I'm actually gonna call it newsletter and hit enter. And I'm gonna pull it to the bottom of her homepage. And so now we have it duplicated. So what I need to do in the Instagram, I'm gonna click on the Instagram, make sure that I'm actually in the Instagram page. So nope, I'm gonna scroll all the way down. So see how it's twice on this Instagram page. I am going to make sure that I delete the actual newsletter block. Yes, we can delete these spacers here because I don't think we'll need them. And then I'm gonna hit save. I'm now gonna come into the newsletter block and say edit. And I'm gonna delete all of the other stuff that we already have above us and only leave the Instagram block. So get rid of all this and these. And I should just have the Instagram block, which is not showing up right now because I need to tell it where to go. So I'm gonna edit the block and I'm gonna say for storage, I want it to go to that website mailing list and apply. So now it's in here by itself. I still think we probably don't need those spacers, but Sarah can add those back in if she thinks we need more. So I've got this here now and it's its own little page now. So I'll pull, it's already where it needs to be perfect. So now on that announcement bar up here at the top, I can specifically say, let's go into marketing, um, whoops, announcement bar, it's enabled. I'm going to say, join our mailing list and again she can come in and change this to say whatever she wants it to say if she wants it to say you know for special deals you know blah 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 we're going to whoops, come into page and i'm going to search for the newsletter page and that's not showing up so this is great you guys can see when i mess up that's perfect because we all mess up so let's go back into my pages and see what i called that maybe i didn't change the url slug on it so let's go down to that newsletter page and check the settings. And it says it's newsletter, so maybe I'll just refresh and let it think for a second. And we will try again. So go back into my marketing and that or announcement bar. Instead of this, we're going to go to page. We're going to search for a newsletter and it's still not showing up. That's really annoying. Okay, so instead let's try this one. Salonnebraska.com. 
that is her website address if you guys feel like you want to go there. Now if I do newsletter, there we go. So see how it pops me up to that specific page. So I don't know why it's glitching right now, but this is a totally acceptable way to do this as well. So I can just come in here and save that. Save, and now that is going to refresh and it's going to say, oh, except that I didn't change. Good Lord. Okay, we're gonna change the verbiage so that it says join our mailing list because I didn't save that. So join our mailing list and we've got it going to the right URL. And save. So now on our new guest page, we can come in and do the same thing. So anywhere we want to on this page, we can probably just add a brand new newsletter block. So if we wanted to wait and do it at the bottom, we could use a button that would link to that same page just by doing exactly what I did, um, either linking with a button and saying join our mailing list. But I hate jumping people around too much. So for me, I would rather just have the newsletter block put in here. Sorry, my dog is trying to sit on the chair with me, so <laughs> I move around. Um, you can go into the actual newsletter block and add it right here. We can, it says newsletter form already. We can decide to say it, for it to say whatever we want it to say. So maybe she wants to join our mailing list. And I'll let her come in and customize this to be exactly what she wants it to say because we have this whole area down here. Um, she can add you know, special details about, um, and then I usually like to leave the disclaimer, we respect your prop, uh, privacy. It's sign up is what we've got, and you can change the fields, the layout as well, if you want them to be stacked on top of each other, which will look more like this, or you can do it layout where it's floating they're next to each other. Change the alignment. You can also say that you want to require the name field, and then you would have their first and last name as well, so you can truly customize the emails. Then we go into storage. We make sure that it's set to website. And then we also go to post submit. And you can change it to say like, thank you, or like we look forward to welcoming you to our salon. You can make it say whatever you want to, but this is basically the message that they would get as soon as they enter their email address. You could give them a free download if you wanted to. So like you could say, join our mailing list and receive um, my list of tips and tricks for keeping your hair, you know, uh, not so dry during the winter season or something, I don't know. Um, if you did, then you would say like download here, Download your handout here. I'm having a hard time with everything this morning. So the here, or this whole sentence, could then just be linked to a file that you would upload, and it would be a PDF file. So you could just click it and say save. Let me cancel out of this. And then when people submit their email address, they would be able to actually download the PDF right then and there. So that's a really nice way to do like an opt-in. Go ahead and say apply. So the other thing is that if we wanted, we could, instead of doing something like this, like if she knows she doesn't care about having the email saved on her Squarespace site, she knows she would rather send them out through like MailChimp or a different platform, we could actually have everything going to, rather than using the newsletter block, we could be capturing email addresses. Instead of using the newsletter block, we could be using a form because we can send them all to like a Google Drive. So if I come in and use a block and say I want to use a form instead, I customize, I could get rid of subject and message, but I could also gather different information if I wanted to. So I could just say I only want their name, I could say I only want their email, whatever it is that I want to capture. I would change the name of it to say um, mailing list because they're going to be able to see what this is, what happens when this form pops up. So let's say I only want their email address. That's all I care about. When I go to storage, I'm going to actually say, I don't, you could have it sent to your email as well. So that way you get kind of an extra copy, like, Hey, this person signed up, but then you can either add it to your MailChimp right here and connect, or you could connect it to your Google drive right here. Whatever forms you have in here, 
you're going to actually, whatever we've named this here, so I've named it mailing list. I'm going to go into my Google Drive if I choose to do Google Drive. And I'm going to make a new sheet in my Google Sheets and call it the same name I'm calling this. So I'm going to call it mailing list. And then from then on, I don't even have to put the forms in the sheet. All I have to do is make a blank sheet that says mailing list. If I had 30 forms in here, I'm sorry, 30 fields in here and this huge form, it doesn't matter. The first person that fills out that form with all of the fields, Google is actually going to populate that spreadsheet for me. So it's going to keep all that data for me. Anytime I want to, I can just export that um, data and put it into any type of platform that I want to for my mail. If you do that, obviously this form is kind of ugly. So instead you would go into advanced you would decide if you want it because we're going to make a button to make it a light box so we're going to say we want it centered for there we come down here and we say we want it to be light boxed again we can do that same thing with that post submit um, message and everything else whoops that would be up here post submit message it just says thank you but you can have an opt-in or make it say whatever you want it to say we're going to enable the light box button and instead of saying open form we're going to say join um, our mailing list and then say apply and save. And then we are going to refresh so I can show you what that form would look like. So in the case of using a form, again, it's not gonna be saved in the marketing area. It's just gonna to dump to either MailChimp or to your Google Drive and you'll, you could get an, um, a, another, uh, you could get it to your email address as well and do both. But when they click on it, it's just going to open up. They put in their email, they hit submit, and then they get their thank you message or whatever the message is that you have made it say. If you wanted to do that, then obviously you're going to delete this one. You're just going to have the simple block right here, the simple form uh, button right here. And then she would go back to her home page. And instead of having the mailing, I'm sorry, the newsletter block that we've used on this home page. Ah, I need to get back to the home page. Instead of having this subscribe button, instead we would repeat that whole process again and we would add another form here and make the form go to her. It would just, we would make sure that it's called the exact same one. So if we called it mailing list, on the other form, we wanna make sure it's also called mailing list here, so they'll dump into the same spot. We would delete everything here. We would make sure it's going to our Google Drive and click to connect that. And then we would go in and change it to the light box mode and make it say join our mailing list. So if we did that, obviously then she would want to delete this other subscribe and we wouldn't even have to worry about this announcement bar because we've already told this announcement bar, it needs to jump anytime someone clicks on this. Let's test it out in her actual thing. So go back to her homepage and anytime anyone clicks on this, oh, refresh, it's going to jump them down that homepage to that little newsletter section that we did. So get in here, I'm on the homepage, I click here and it's going to, Oh no, I'll fix that. But it basically will bring them down to that home page. Um, I'm probably doing something really dumb. So I'll fix that. But it's basically going to bring them down here. So whether this says subscribe and has the newsletter block or it has the form, either way, it doesn't matter. It's still going to bring them down to this section and then they'll be able to fill out the information. So it's really just kind of a matter of personal preference. If you want to keep the all of your emails in that mailing list section of the email campaigns area within your Squarespace website and then be able to export them out if you ever need them. Or if you'd rather just go ahead and have them all go into MailChimp or into uh, Google Drive, um, then you could do that as well. Unfortunately, there's no way to have them go directly into your Vagaro account um, and have them stored there. You kind of have to have them stored externally and then combine all of those lists yourself. But I hope this helps. Thanks for bearing with me um, a little bit bumpy this morning, but it's going to be a great day. So talk to you guys later.